Hello everybody, welcome to the Virgo Potenz YouTube channel. This article can be found at the website virgopotenz.org. Rosary or Shipwreck by Tony Capobianco. The advent of the internet has ushered in a dizzying array of news, opinions, social media, and an unprecedented access to information. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, so what? This isn't exactly a news flash, nor are these the 1990s. True enough. But do we stop and ask ourselves what influence the internet has on us? Does the constant flood of negative stories and scandals harm our charity or even our faith? Are we lost at sea in a danger of perishing? Have we ever examined our consciences and asked if we are using the internet and social media in accordance with the practice of custody of the eyes and mind? This season of Advent is an appropriate time to consider such things while fixing our focus on the advent of Jesus Christ. How can we amplify our focus on Christ? Who can help us and teach us to more perfectly focus on Christ? Quote, obsessively following church politics as some people obsessively follow secular politics may lead to madness. Focus instead on the beautiful theology of the church and her rich devotions. End quote. These are the paraphrased words from a recent homily given by Father Smith. These words really resonated with me as I have been giving this subject much thought this past year. Father hit the nail on the head. Father admonished us not to constantly focus on all of the negative things in the church and in the world. I can only imagine the difficult questions that he, as a pastor, must have to routinely answer about the current crisis. Being a spiritual father of souls must give him a unique insight to the effect that this crisis has on souls, and particularly the effect that it has on souls who continuously focus on all the things that are wrong. Now, I'm certainly not suggesting that we should bury our heads in the sand while pretending that everything is sunshine and roses. Rather, I'm suggesting that we ought to cover ourselves in the light of Christ and with devotion to the Most Holy Rosary. We have all seen the disastrous consequences of being constantly negative. Dwelling on all that is wrong in the church and the world seems to be a sign of spiritual sickness. If darkness and wickedness become our primary focus, then consumed by them we shall be. Whenever God is not the center of our hearts and minds, it must follow that some other idol is, and as a result, our souls along with our lives will be disordered. Christ must rule our hearts and minds if we wish to have his peace. If we perpetually peer into the darkness, then the darkness will eventually peer back. If we dwell in darkness, how can we be the light of the world? In Matthew chapter 5, our blessed Lord tells us, quote, Blessed are ye when they shall revile you and persecute you, and speak all that is evil against you, and truly for my sake. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward is very great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets that were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt lose its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is good for nothing any more but to be cast out and to be trodden on by men. You are the light of the world. End quote. Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Allow me to make one brief clarification before we continue. I am not attacking the work that Catholic media outlets do as they cover current events. Exposing evil and correcting error is difficult yet necessary work. In fact, the good work of Steve Skojek at 1 Peter 5 helped bring me to tradition. For that, I am very grateful. Steve Skojek does not solely cover current events and scandals. No, he also writes and publishes many beautiful articles on tradition, and this has helped to guide many souls closer to God and his church. However, a caveat ought to be added. It is one thing for journalists and authors to deal with the darkness on a daily basis on account of the duties of their vocation, but it is quite another thing for those of us who don't have the same vocation. Each of us has different weaknesses and strengths. Each of us receives different graces. I suspect that if God is calling a person to do such work, and he will provide for them specific graces to endure such a cross faithfully. That being said, I am certainly not St. Padre Pio, and I cannot read souls. Each person must make an examination of conscience and determine whether or not reporting on or even reading about the latest scandals is harming their faith. If reading current events is harmful, to your faith, then stop reading about them. Just stop it. 
No matter what the case may be, the order of charity compels us to focus on Christ, not on the devil and his ministers of darkness. Focusing on the latest ecclesiastical and Vatican intrigue, rather than focusing on Christ, has potentially tragic consequences. Having disordered focus on all that is wrong can jeopardize the three theological virtues which God has infused in us. Since we have all seen examples of people who have apparently lost the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, there is no need to point out examples. If we wish to keep and cherish the three infused theological virtues, then we must choose to focus on Christ. We must choose to focus on the good, the true, and the beautiful. We must be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. How can we amplify our focus on His Majesty Christ the King? Praying the Most Holy Rosary daily will amplify our focus on Jesus Christ. The Most Holy Rosary is our refuge, weapon, and compass amidst these dark and stormy seas. The Church knows of no private devotion more perfect, powerful, efficacious, or beautiful than the Holy Rosary. Pope Leo XIII knew this, and it's for this reason that he wrote 12 beautiful encyclicals on the Rosary. There is no storm, no matter how violent, that the Rosary cannot calm. There is no army, no matter how fearsome, that the Rosary cannot vanquish. Who can help us to focus more perfectly on Christ? The Holy Mother of God is the perfect human person to help us to focus more perfectly on her divine Son, Jesus Christ. No creature knows Jesus better than his Holy Mother. No human person more perfectly focused on God and followed his will than the Most Blessed Virgin Mary. The second person of the Most Blessed Trinity, Jesus Christ, chose to come to us through Mary, and it greatly pleases him when we come to him through his Mother. Not only is the Virgin Mary the mother of God, but she is also the mother of the Church. As Mary stood faithfully at the foot of the cross, our blessed Lord gave his mother to us, and he gave us to his Holy Mother. We would be utterly foolish not to run to our sweet mother while employing her for help. The Blessed Virgin always leads souls to Christ. If our souls are troubled by the evils of our day, it would do us good to call to mind these hopeful words of Pope St. Pius X. Quote, Let the storm rage and the sky darken. Not for that shall we be dismayed. If we trust as we should in Mary, we shall recognize in her the Virgin most powerful, who with virginal foot did crush the head of the serpent. End quote. Pope St. Pius X. The Most Holy Rosary prevents individual souls, families, shepherds, and nations from being shipwrecked. The following are the beautiful words spoken by Father Christopher Smith on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Quote, I have never seen a family that prayed the rosary together every day become shipwrecked. End quote. The advent of the internet has brought with it many temptations, including the temptation to lose a Christ-centered focus. The devil and his demons have a motto anything but God. It therefore comes as no surprise that the devil would corrupt the good uses of the internet to serve him and his wicked will. The evil one wants us to be distracted. He tries to seduce us to see what he wants us to see. Puffed up with sinful pride, the devil desires what we f- that we focus on the darkness and his apparent power and triumph. The devil wants to rob us of our peace, our faith, our hope, our charity, and our salvation. He craves for us to make just one fatal mistake by getting us to take our focus off of Jesus Christ so that we may perish in a shipwreck. Thanks be to God for the simple yet beautiful protection against the diabolical schemes of the legions of hell. Indeed, when Our Lady gave the Holy Rosary to St. Dominic, she gave all of her children a simple, elegant, and profoundly powerful weapon to confound the prideful devil and his agents of evil. Even a simple child can make the ruler of hell tremble in fear. How great is God! He who exalts the lowly and humble over the proud is very pleased by those who devoutly pray the rosary. A soul lovingly focused on the Lord shall not perish. The Most Holy Rosary is a luminous lighthouse, which cuts through the fog of diabolical disorientation. As one devoutly prays the Holy Rosary while meditating upon the lives of our Lord and the Blessed Virgin Mary, untold graces are obtained. 
Jesus and Mary show us the way, as they are the perfect examples for all to emulate. In a world in which the Christian moral order is often inverted, we can find refuge, sanity, and right order by contemplating the lives of Jesus Christ and his Holy Mother, as their very lives perfectly teach us of the holy virtues. In the Most Holy Rosary, accompanied by Our Lady, we focus on the life of he who is the light. The Holy Rosary is forged with the power of heaven and imbued with brilliant light, so that it may shine as a heavenly lighthouse. The Holy Rosary, as a heavenly lighthouse, scatters the darkness and guides souls to the safe harbor of salvation, which was won by Jesus Christ. Virgo potens, oro pro nobis. Amen.